Good morning. Nine o'clock, Monday. Memorial or Memorial Day, Labor Day, September. Hard to believe we're already September fourth. Ah oh, man, almost a week into September already. <clears throat> My wife has some interesting things sitting here on the table. Looks a little dangerous, doesn't it? We should probably make her get a permit for that. <clears throat> Got that. Scissors. Got this little thing that like glows in the dark. It's really kind of cool. <clears throat> uh oh, she's gonna get on TV. <laughs> she needs coffee. <clears throat> she made the mistake though, and she decided not to get her coffee until nine o'clock. So I should put her on here and interview her today or something, maybe do something special for Labor Day. <laughs> You're right, Jan, girl toys. <clears throat> oh, but she did. She made a hot. She made, like, just out of the blue, she made a little hot pad yesterday. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Huh. Isn't that nice? Where's your little bag that you made? She made a bag yesterday afternoon, too. She was having all kinds of fun. <clears throat> Makes all these fun little things and then gives them away. <laughs> oh, she's getting the bag. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Look at these. Isn't that nice? Got a little zipper. See there? Mm. Isn't that nice? I don't know. Yep. <clears throat> Made two of those. Gets a little bored. So she makes something. All right. <laughs> All right. This week, let me think here. I will, uh, Lord willing, be on here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, I will not be on here Friday. Uh, Tyler and I are headed to the mountains to chase after uh, uh, See, Mandy. That'd be good. I'll tell Teresa. Yeah, that's a good idea. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, I won't be on here Friday. Tyler and I are headed to the mountains to chase after a crazy elk with a muzzleloader. Uh, took uh, 16 points to draw this tag. So my 17th year, I drew the tag. So I drew it a couple of years ago, but it was a year uh, Tyler had had <clears throat> cancer surgery and he wasn't going to be able to go and I didn't want to go by myself so I turned it back in and I and I drew it again this year so we'll uh plan on going so uh next week I have no idea uh I the muzzleloader season opens on Saturday <clears throat> and closes up the next uh Sunday I, I won't miss I'm not going to miss two Sundays, but um, <clears throat> I have no idea how long this might take. Or, uh, you know, if I get into one early, that'd be great. If I don't see any, who knows? But <clears throat> I, I might miss the entire next week. So <clears throat> just so you know, um, um, I might may be gone all of next week. So just putting that out there for you so that you uh, are aware. So... <clears throat> um, Anyway, I don't know of anything else uh, newsworthy, uh, nothing. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, I, I am, you know, yesterday I mentioned this to a church, but I'm a little concerned um, about these um, uh, kind, benevolent uh, uh, watch care overs uh, of us. Um, doing something with the the covid protocol uh let's uh, hope that they don't hope there's enough kickback 
that they uh, don't get idiotic on that junk again. Uh, we just got to stand hard against that. Uh, I, don't, I don't care. They say what they want, believe what they want. Um, <clears throat> I just not going to live my life that way. Uh, and if you, if you own your own shop, you should never shut down ever, ever again. I mean, they, they are such liars about that. All they did was they left the big stores open because it's easy to control them. And they were happy to be the ones to stay open because they, the windfall of money that came into places like Walmart while the mom and pop stores are going broke. Um, <clears throat> it's just, it's just socialistic in what they did there. And they want that and uh, don't do it. Just don't do it, guys. Stay open. Uh, let people live their lives and uh, <clears throat> live according to the inalienable rights that God has given us. So that's all I'm saying about that <clears throat> and fight against it. So, and in that, yeah, it goes right into, you know, there are days when I've told you that kind of scattered everywhere on my devotion, but then there are other days where uh, the, the devotion has a theme all the way through. Well, today uh, had that theme just of uh, uh, God leading us and directing us and trusting him for guidance. And it was really good. And, and it's all out of the Old Testament uh, this morning. So in Psalm 48, the very last verse of Psalm 48, it says, For this is our God, uh, for this God is our God forever and ever, he will be our guide even unto death. And uh, it, it's just, I don't know, I found it to be very reassuring to know that <clears throat> God doesn't leave us. When when we have trusted Christ as our Savior and and we're we're walking with him then, we're, we're his child, and uh, he, he never leaves our side. He's always there. And he, he will, he will, he will guide us if we'll just listen and watch and pay attention. And he, he can encourage us. He can strengthen us. He, he, uh, he's our partner. I mean, he's right there with us and never leaves us. And, and even unto death, I mean, he is always there. You know, I, I just believe, and I know that <clears throat> from what I see in scripture, that when, when you have a loved one that, is uh, soon to meet their savior and, and they're laying in a bed somewhere and uh, <clears throat> their old body shutting down. I, I have uh, uh, full confidence in, in knowing, first of all, God never leaves us. And God is able to communicate uh, to us even when no one else can. And uh, I just believe that even while someone's laying there, that God is ministering to their hearts and and uh, uh, stirring in their in their soul and and uh, uh, encouraging them to come on home, <clears throat> and it's a joy, and it truly is a reassurance of knowing that no matter what comes, it's okay. God has us, and and we can live with that confidence. So I, I hope that you guys live that way too, and <clears throat> let's just not let things get us too stirred up about the challenges that may come. These people, uh, all they have is this world, and all they have is what they can gain in their lifetime, and uh, one day that that is uh, uh, going to be over. Proverbs 22, 2 says, the rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is a maker of them all, and they can <clears throat> jump around, and they can climb over the backs of everyone around them. They can try to, to control and manipulate people, and give themselves more and more power. Uh, it's, it's just, it's a wicked thing what our flesh will do. If, <clears throat> if you never try to control your flesh and never try to control the urges that you have, whatever they may be, it, it's going to lead you down a, down a path of terrible devastation. And you, you have <clears throat> addicts who, who are a perfect example of that, right? That, They'll, they'll destroy their lives. Well, these people are, are addicts uh, towards power. They're addicted to the money. They're, they're addicted to that lifestyle. And they're not going to give it up for anything. And, and <clears throat> if anyone challenges that, then they uh, are going to go after them. And <clears throat> even 330-some million Americans, they'll squash them if they try to get in their way of what they want. And 
I find it sad because the rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. There, there's a day coming where uh, everything that they've uh, strove for, you know, have been striving for through their lives, they're going to lose it all. And uh, just a sad day for them. And But it's a good day for us. And so we are just going to continue to move forward. It says in Proverbs twenty two sixteen. He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. This is God's word, guys. I mean, this is what God says. And and so, <clears throat> do we believe it or do we not? Do we live by it or do we not? Do we fret and worry and, and just walk around in anger all the time? Or or do we do we let God give us the peace in our hearts that he wants us to have? And Look, <clears throat> my devotion, my issues, right? These are issues that I have in my life, and I keep reminding myself of these things. And and then it goes on and, and tells us how to walk in wisdom and, and in his power. It says in verse 17, Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. So listen to the word of God. Listen to what it says and learn to apply it to your life. For it is a pleasant thing. If thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips, that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Look, <clears throat> the word of wisdom today, trust the Lord and, and trust him not, not only for your salvation. You've dealt with that, hopefully, at the cross, right? You, you call on Christ to be your savior you look to him for salvation, and he gives you salvation. And so that's settled, okay? Make sure that's settled in your heart. Make sure that you've humbled yourself and trusted Christ as your Savior, okay? First and foremost. But then, as a believer, then trust him for everything. Don't don't fret. Don't worry. Don't, don't think that you have to take everything into your hands, and, and you have to do it all, and, and, and that you're the answer. <clears throat> you're not. You're not the answer. God is. And and so, yes, we do our part and we work hard and we do the things we're supposed to and we trust God to, to provide. But uh, and, and in, in doing so, we, we continue to trust him for everything and just look to him every day. Trust him. And, you know, if if you if you're unsettled about something, then you definitely need to be praying God for guidance. Right. My, and my advice to you, this is what I, I try to do in my life. You, if your your mind is, is thinking about something or focusing on something, then I pray and ask God, Lord, show me the decision that I need to make. Are there some changes in my life that need to come? And, and you pray about them. And, and God, uh, the, the biggest thing in my life, the, the heaviest weight that I I that I use. I, I will talk to people and get their counsel, <clears throat> but ultimately you still have to make the decision, right? But I want to get godly counsel. I want to make sure that I'm not going out into left field on something, right? So you, so you do get godly counsel. You pray and, and you seek God's will. Some, some say they won't do anything until they get a verse. Some, and that's fine. I, I don't, necessarily always look for a verse, but maybe I should. There are many that do, that God will, will show you an exact verse that will give you the direction that you need. I, for, for me, it's the peace. It's the peace that the Holy Spirit gives me, knowing that I'm making the right decision. And so <clears throat> um, with that, and, and you just know it. I mean, I, I don't know how to explain that, but if I'm unsettled and I'm unsure, I don't do anything. God is not the author of confusion. And so I'm, I'm not going to make a decision and go ahead and jump at something if I'm not sure and I don't have the peace. If I'm still unsettled, I just stay right where I am, doing exactly what I'm doing until God gives me the peace. Then, then one way or the other. Yes, I need to change it. God gives me peace. No, I don't need to change this. I need to stay where I'm at doing what I'm doing. Then I'm good with that. You just, and, and then you move on. And, and, but in all of that, you need to trust God and trust his wisdom. Definitely make sure that 
the decision that you're trying to make is biblical, right? There, there is no decision making on something that if it's unbiblical, you're, you're not to do that. Okay. That's just biblical wisdom. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, but otherwise, you know, we, uh, we trust God and, and walk with him. And then I'm in Ecclesiastes also right now. And, uh, I find this amazing. <clears throat> um, I, I've read this several times and, and just wonderful, godly, uh, practical advice. You know, Solomon wrote Ecclesiastes and, and he starts it off by saying, I, I, I'm a man, that ha I have everything that the world has to offer. And he did. I mean, he was wise. He was extremely wealthy, uh, had anything that had the power to demand whatever it was that he wanted. And Ecclesiastes then, he says, I write this book. It's as a journal is, is what Ecclesiastes is, is a journal of his pursuit to find happiness without God, okay? In a nutshell, that's what the book of Ecclesiastes is. He said, I'm going to go out and I'm going to find happiness in this world without God. And, and so through this, then, he writes his findings as he goes about trying to live his life without God being involved, okay? And some of the observations that he makes and some that he doesn't, you know, finds that some of these things are true, some of these things are not, right? <clears throat> well, he gives us a ton of words to live by in, in all of this. And uh, he gives some really good advice. I mean, what, uh, in Ecclesiastes 7, first of all, verses 1 through 4, a good name is better than precious ointment. So a good testimony, Right. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. Why is that? Well, you haven't lived any time yet. And so uh, <clears throat> let's make sure that we live our lives well. Make sure that, that when, you, when you leave this earth that uh, you, you have done well in, 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 in here in godly wisdom let's leave well by, by leaving a godly testimony and godly influence on others around. Then it goes on. This is a hard one. It is better to go to the house of mourning, and that's like grief, okay? That's the mourning that we're talking about, than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. And so, uh, you know, sometimes we, we go through some deep valleys, but even those we ought to be thankful for because it's in those valleys where we, we really uh, see our faith grow and it's there that God uses uh, his word and the presence and the comforting of the Holy Spirit to do something that he, that he isn't going to do otherwise. And so uh, I, I think that even with the challenges of today, you know, in, in our society, it, it's just a day to rise up. It's a day to rise up and walk with God and be confident in your walk and in your faith. And and that's exactly what God wants to use it for. He wants to use it for our betterment, not not for worse, but truly for our betterment. And this is what it says in verse 10 of chapter seven of Ecclesiastes. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. So you know what he's saying? Stop looking at the good old days and wishing and wanting the, everything to go back to the way it used to be. Boy, I mean, I read that. And I'm like, you know what? Sorry, Lord. I do that all the time. I think, man, I just want it to go back to the good old days. I, I want it to, to be that. You know, I, I think sometimes we, we get caught up that with our kids too. You know, we, we want to uh, give our kids the same kind of life that we had. And, and I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen. Their reality is different than what ours was as kids. And you, you can't give them what we had. It's just not going to happen. It's a different world. It's a different culture. And, and stop, you know, stop bemoaning the fact that 
you know, that they, they don't, you know, they're, they're not going to get to enjoy the same things we did. They're going to enjoy different things and that's okay. And, and here we need to quit pining away about thinking how bad it is today and how much better it was back in that day. I, I mean, look, my devotion, my problems, I'm sharing you my problems, all right? <laughs> and it's and and he tells us this. I mean, this is just the fact of what he's telling us. Stop doing that, for thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. Look, <clears throat> God has us for this day, okay? Why? Well, because he knows that we can handle it with him. And so... We ought to look at this and praise the Lord that uh, in in our generation that we are able to influence our children uh, to to walk by faith and and truly be that and and so let's uh, stop living in the past and and let's stop moving forward and and watch what God can do and and uh, that verse ten Ecclesiastes seven ten is one that I need to highlight and mark down and make sure that. I'm reminded of that every once in a while. And then then it goes on, and this is what it says in verses 19 through 22, telling us how we ought to live. Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than 10 mighty men which were in the city. Look, strength and power comes in wisdom. Wisdom of God's word. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Be careful, we can seek all the, the wisdom of men, all we want, and we can think about how great they are in the world's wisdom, but that there is none that doeth good and sinneth not. Also, take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee, for oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise has cursed others. You know what he's telling us here? That there are times where you just have to quit worrying about what other people are saying. And you also need to understand that <clears throat> that some advice is, is uh, it's just from someone that doesn't have any more knowledge about the future than you do. And also then there are those who are going to be trashing you along the way and quit wasting your time in defending yourself and crying and moaning and posting it on, on social media about how misrepresented you are and all of that. that you, I was afraid he was going to call me right now. So, But we just need to do what we are supposed to do, okay? And, and, and hear that and, and understand sometimes you say things about people you shouldn't say either. Me too. And so, but here the strength comes in wisdom. That's it. Wisdom. Let us walk in wisdom of God's word. And then the last thing that I have is over in chapter nine. <clears throat> and he tells us this. He says, live joyfully with thy wife, whom thou lovest all the days of the life of the, thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity, for that is the portion in, in this life and in thy labor, which thou takest under the sun. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. You know what? Just go out and, and enjoy the life that God has given you. Honor him, glorify him with it, and rest in that. And you'll find God to uh, take care of things and, and lead you and direct you and encourage you. And, and, and he, doesn't, he doesn't want us to walk around living this life angry. He, he doesn't want us to live this life all stressed out and worried about things we have no control over. He, he, he doesn't... He just doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to live a life of faith and trust. And yes, there are hard times that come. And, and yes, there are people who are going to disagree with you. And yes, there are people that are going to try to yell louder and, and try to uh, put you down. And you, you know what? God's got it all and he's bigger than any of them. And we just need to walk with him and trust him. And we'll just find God to be sufficient in everything. So... Those are Monday's Monday's musings, and uh, <laughs> hang in there. It's a Monday, right? <clears throat> God bless you guys. Let's go out and let's have a good day. Tell somebody about Jesus today. God bless.